Let's translate Numbers chapter 6, verses 22 through 27, the famous benediction. By Daver Adonai el Moshe le mor, Daver el Aharon va el Banav le mor, ko Ivarahu et bene Yisrael amor lahem. Yibarech ka Adonai vishmerecha. Ya er Adonai panav elecha vichunecha. Yasa Adonai panav elecha viyasem lecha shalom. Visamu et shemi al bene Yisrael ve ani avarachem. Which of course loosely translates to and Lord said to Moses, speak to Aaron and his sons to say, thus you will bless the sons of Israel to say to them, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord shine his face on you and be gracious to you. The Lord take up his face to you and give to you peace. Thus, they will put my name on the sons of Israel, and I will bless them. If you want to show your support and sport some cool merch, pick up this Greek Jesus is Lord zip up hoodie from the merch store today. All right, so we start with our Vav, and our subject is Adonai, Yahweh, and then our verb, Aver. Then we have the recipient of the speaking, and we have the instruction. So, spoke to Moses, saying what? Le more. So now, in our new clause, in our new sentence, we have there. So, the Lord is still speaking, and he's telling Moses to speak to Aaron. But not just Aaron, also his sons. So, speak to Aaron and his sons, and say... So you can see the parallelism here between the first verse and the second verse. What are you going to say? You're going to say, thus you will bless sons of Israel. And this blessing, amor, to say to them. This little psalmic we're going to ignore. Just a paragraph marker. So what's interesting is there are three of these amars. In fact, I'm going to move this like that. Mar, one, two, three, Adonai, Moshe, Aharon, and his sons. I put this Vav in the wrong spot. This is supposed to be right here. There we go. That is correct, right there. I'm going to delete this Samic, this Samic, this Samic, and this Peh. We don't need those. So now we have the content of this Amar, Amor. Technically, this one's the content of this one. Now we're going to have the content of this one. So we have the Lord bless you and keep you. Then we have the Lord shine his face on you and be gracious to you. I'll move this over like that. I want this to scooch in. That's better. So the first clause is the Lord be gracious to you and keep you or guard you. Then the Lord shine his face on you and be gracious to you and then third yahweh this is toughed up to take up his face very similar to the previous clause on you and give to you peace so what's funny is we have amar 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 and now we have adonai 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 one two three then we have a whole new sentence. This one is not relating to the blessing at all. You can tell because of the verbal shift. So we have the shamu, and they, move it over here to show this is the verbal section, and they will put my name, put it where? On sons of Israel. For the sake of space here, I'm just gonna put it over here, but it's really parallel and it's emphatic and I will bless them. It's emphatic because uh, our verb here already has the person built in. And yet, here's ani. I and I will bless them. So to translate 
and the Lord spoke with Moses saying, speak to Aaron and his sons saying, thus you will bless the sons of Israel saying to them, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord shine his face on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his face to you and give to you peace. And they will put my name on the sons of Israel and I will bless them. Now let me know in the comments below, did you find this diagram helpful? If you did, let me know. If you didn't, tell me what would have been helpful. Well, let's dive into the vocabulary. So devar is to speak. However, this is PL. However, this is devar too. When you look at accordance, it says it's devar too. So it's not this one, which bears the idea of turning aside, driving away. It's this one. And it does occur in the Cal at least 40 times. It occurs in the Nifal and the PL and the Pu'al and the Hithpal. In the PL, it means to speak. Now, don't forget our conjunction, you know, which is easier to just look up by typing it in. It can mean and, together with, as well as both and. And then, in this case, without much context, I'm just going to translate it. And Yahweh, Adonai, this is the Lord, saying to, speaking to, so L here, towards, to, against, in consideration of, in addition to, towards, so it really bears the idea of to, towards, or with, direction towards. It's not motion. It's marking the direction of the speaking. So Yahweh speaks to Moses. So Moshe in the cow means to draw out from the water. Hence Moses' name is Moses because he's drawn out of the water. Here's the noun and the name, the proper noun. And Amar is to say this is the simple act of communicating something it can also mean to give orders and what did yahweh say to moses he said speak to aaron and his sons so here daver is pl imperative whereas the first daver was pl vav consecutive so it's imperfect except it's vav consecutive so it's translated as a perfect here, it's an imperative. It's a command. It's still PL, so speak, but it's emphatic. Speak! Speak to whom? To Aaron, Aharon. In Egyptian, this related name means name is great, and this is of a god. That's largely irrelevant. But it's not just to Aaron, it's also to his sons. So Ben, son. And then you see the suffix here for his son. This is the third person suffix. And then to say. So both and here with Amar, they're both infinitives with the la prefix preposition. So literally, it's Yahweh sp spoke to Moses to say, to say. But infinitives can be translated more like a participle. Now, this is the construct, not the absolute. Infinitive construct with inseparable prepositions. The inseparable prepositions, ba, ha, or la, may be prefixed to the infinitive construct with a range of uses and translational values. In general, the infinitive construct with la is used to express purpose or result. When prefixed to an infinitive construct, the pre inseparable prepositions, ba, and ka, are used temporally, and either preposition may translate when or while. So if we were to take this literally, then this would read, in order to say, but that still doesn't quite make sense. So there's purpose, intent, results. There's inceptive, verbal noun, because it is an infinitive, which is a verbal noun. In this use, the infinitive construct functions like a noun, often as the subject or object of the verbal idea. This is the case here. It may or may not be prefixed with the preposition la when used in this way. So this is what we have here. This is the verbal noun aspect, and that's because the true meaning of an infinitive at its at its core is a verbal noun. And it's marking the substance, the subject of what the verbal aspect is. The verbal aspect is to speak, speak, saying, speak, saying. So this all makes sense. Thus, co. So this means they're here if it's a local sense, temporal now, or adverbial, thus. This is our sense here. Thus. 
they will bless. Rather, you will bless. This is second person, masculine plural. This is Aaron and his sons. You will bless. It is P not Cal. So it's got a, an, an, an intensifying aspect. Takes it a little bit beyond the Cal. Usually the Cal Barach is passive. This one's not passive. This is PL and it is active. And you can see here number 623, to bless. This is equal to wishing someone to have special power. It's used in a formula of blessing. You will bless who? The direct object is the sons of Israel. Yisrael, it either means to fight against or God fights, El fights. Has basic meaning of to rule, to prove oneself, be ruler. This is the name of Jacob when he was renamed after he fought with the Lord, wrestled with the Lord, and it becomes the name of the people of Israel, so the sons of Israel. And now we have an, another infinitive. In this case, it's a Cal infinitive absolute. There's no construct. So coming over here to our grammar, we can look at the absolute and we can look at the use. The infinitive absolute is a verbal noun with regard to function. However, there is no precise English equivalent to the Hebrew infinitive absolute. It may be used with other verbs to emphasize or intensify the verbal meaning. It may also be used in the place of an imperative to express a command. In special instances, it can be used with other verbs to express two verbal actions occurring at the same time. Once again, remember that the infinitive absolute does not occur with prepositional prefixes or pronominal suffixes. There's the emphatic use, the imperatival use, the simultaneous use, and the complementary use. In this case, it seems to be complementary. If we were to make it emphatic, infinitive absolute will immediately precede or rarely follow a perfect or imperfect verbal form. That is not what happens here. It does not immediately precede or follow. Imperatival, it would stand by itself and function as an imperative. It does not. Simultaneous. This would have two infinitive absolutes. We do not have that, so we're left with complementary. An infinitive absolute may complement the main verb of a sentence and carry the temporal value of that main verb. So our main verb is PL imperfect, second masculine plural. You will bless, or y'all will bless. So therefore, the temporal value here would be imperfect. You will say to them. And then we have Barach again. Again, in the PL. Now, it is Joseph, third masculine singular. So, be because of that, we're going to translate it, may, may the, may the Lord bless you, and may the Lord keep you. Now, shamar means keep, watch over, take care of, preserve, protect. It is cal, not another stem. So it can mean preserve, protect, take care of, save, retain, keep, observe, watch over. It can also mean observe an order, stick to an agreement, or keep an appointment. So there's a lot of different meaning that goes into shamar. But in general, it means to guard, protect, and that's based off of Semitic data. So may the Lord bless you, and may the Lord keep you. Then we have another one. This one's hifil. Or, or is from the root of or is something about light. You can see the cognate here with the verb or with the noun or means light, daylight, dawn. So the verb bears the same kind of nuance to become light, to dawn, except that's in the cow. In the hifil, which has causative intensification, it's to give light, to cause light, to make light. And here you can see to lighten God's face, number 625. So may the Lord, because it's still Joseph, may the Lord cause his face to lighten or to light or to shine. Shine where? On you. So L, L can mean towards up to, against, in consideration of, in addition to. It's, again, just as we saw earlier with Daver and Moshe and Daver and Aharon, it's towards. Make his face shine towards you. 
I think it's best to translate it as on you, but the meaning is towards, towards you. And may he be gracious to you. So this is Hanan in Cal. It means favor, to favor someone. In the PL, it's to make gracious. In the Polel, it's have compassion. In the Hofal, to be shown compassion. In the Hithpile, implore favor, compassion. So it has this idea of grace, this gift, but it's it's along the lines of, of mercy, compassion, and favor. You can see with the Semitic influence, it's along the lines of sympathy, pity. So favor, may the Lord show favor. This is Cal. It's not PL, Polel, Hofal, Hithpile. It's Cal. So in keeping with Halo, it's going to be along the lines of just simply favor. If we look this up in BDB, show favor used of God in the bestowal of favors with an accusative direct object. In this case, it would be you. You are the accusative direct object. So may he show favor to you or upon you. May he show favor. Then we have Nasa. We have the same phrase as we did before. Adonai panav elecha. Adonai panav elecha. But the verb is different. Before we had or, now we have nasa. Nasa is to lift, to raise, to carry. And here we have to raise his face, meaning to look someone in the eye, show one's face. This is used of God, to be inclined towards someone, right? Maybe this is a show of respect. I don't think that's the case. I think instead this is more along the lines of, hey, God's going to show you his favor. And so this is the same way of saying that same thing, but using our earlier phrase. So literally, may the Lord lift up his face towards you. But we're going to translate it more in its sense, its meaning, which is, may the Lord incline his face towards you. Or we can actually take the face out of it. May the Lord incline himself towards you. So here you get the light of his face shining upon you, and here you get his face raised towards you, looking at you, and seem to put, to place, to give seem and it is also cal lay down set down arrange fix set put stand set up lay upon install place lay set the name install fix mount establish confirm and here's number 626 right here so this is along the lines of set up something for someone and may he set up peace to you now it's set up, but here you can see to give, grant, assign. We have a parenthesis here, no closed parenthesis, still no closed parenthesis. They missed a closed parenthesis somewhere. It might be right here because we have these different examples. So here it's give, grant, assign. So may he give to you peace. Let's look at the preposition la. To, towards, until, away from, of, about. There's a lot of entries here. There's 26 plus emendations. So locally, purpose, aim of movement, temporal, direction. This is recipient. So hence verbs of speaking, aim, purpose, dative of advantage or disadvantage, good with regard to, meaning good for him, thick dative, dative of interest of taking part, expresses belonging, dative of possession, Genitive relation, distributive, a whole into its parts, expresses an accusative mostly, personal, so appositional use, namely, cause or motive, verbs in the passive, inscriptions with infinitive. So it doesn't seem to match any of those. I would say closest we have in this list would be advantage, so peace with regard to you peace for you, thus with verbs of giving, inflicting, and sending. I think this is probably the best. And then shalom. So this is peace, which can mean prosperity or success, intactness, 
welfare, state of state of health. It's a greeting formula. May you be well, friendliness, deliverance, salvation. So may he give you pro uh, prosperity, success. So here's the prosperity gospel. Why not? It's a blessing. And may he give to you peace. And then we have the as thus. I think we saw that earlier. As well as both and then, then, but, or together with, and. Here it looks like maybe then and then. Demonstrative adverb and conjunction. So, then, and. Sometimes it's at the same time or and also. With a voluntative, that is cohortative or justive, v expresses an intention that or so may he remove. So let me eat. Well, this is not justive. It's not cohortative. Now, therefore, why then? Then, then, therefore, therefore. V introduces the predicate or apodosis. Curious, how does NRSV have it? So, how does ESV have it? So, look at number 26. V may introduce a consequence or question, oral style. So turn, thus, we're just going to translate it so or thus. I'm going to go with thus. I like thus. Thus, this is seem again. It's cal perfect third common plural. They will put or lay or set. They will set the name. They will cause it to dwell. They will set the name, my name, my name on the sons of Israel. All over, in front of, before, above, on the side of, on account of, with regard, opposite against, in addition to, from, because. I think it's got the idea of on or over. I'm going to go with on. On. And they will place my name on the sons of Israel. And I, Ani, this is PL imperfect, first common singular. PL, formula blessing. And I will bless them. So to translate, and the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron and his sons, saying, Thus you will bless the sons of Israel, saying to them, May the Lord bless you, and may the Lord keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you, and may he be gracious to you. May the Lord incline his face towards you, and may he give you peace. Thus, they will put my name upon the sons of Israel, and I will bless them. If you found this video helpful, hit the like button. Also, don't forget you can subscribe, but you can also keep watching by clicking on this link here to watch how to translate Proverbs 3 verses 5 and 6. See you next time.